welcome. We have a video here from Anderson Toyota. Got us a RAV4 hybrid here, RAV4 LE hybrid. This is a 2023. There are different kinds of, we'll say generations, because mm -hmm. you might go all the way back to an old 01 Prius. Mm -hmm. You could go to an 07 Prius, 07 mm -hmm. Camry hybrid, those kind of things. So we've kind of got the old hybrid packs to talk about and then the new ones. Um, right. What have you seen, like what, what's the difference as far as technology, what used to be, what's with the current vehicles, that kind of stuff? Right, um, we see on these vehicles, the older packs are staying more on the nickel metal hydride, hy nickel metal hydride batteries. I know, it's a tongue twister. Right, it is. <laughs> and we're going more to the lithium ion battery packs for the new. Well, the 2024 RAV4 hybrid has the nickel metal hydrate. So does he mean 2025 and beyond? Because this is, I believe this is a video from 2023. So he must mean 2025 and beyond. Right. Or he's admitting that a nickel metal hydrate battery is inferior. Or stuff for the higher power delivery and the, the, the higher power delivery. Every, it's the same technology. The RAV4 and the Highlander use a nickel metal hydrate battery. What does it mean by higher power? It delivers a, a certain amount of power for the electric motor in each vehicle. So they're using the nickel metal hydrate batteries in the 2024 RAV4 and Highlanders hybrids currently. So he, he he's probably referring to 2025 or it's just some words I'll be speaking. Better punch that you get out of them. Um, typically on these vehicles, we are seeing the first generations of the hybrid systems just beginning to trickle in with battery replacements. Uh, we see the first gen and the second gen, which would be up to about 2009 for most of the Camrys and Priuses. Um, outside of that, it is fairly uncommon practice for anything above a 2010 in our store, which does almost 6,000 repair orders a month. Uh, we just don't see them. We don't see very many replacements being required on the hybrid battery packs for any of our model line up from 2000. Now we're going to use this RAV4 hybrid as a demo. It's a newer mm -hmm. one, but what is the difference between a hybrid battery pack that people want to know how much do those cost and just a traditional right. car battery? Right. So the hybrid battery pack is what they call the big battery. Well, significantly more. The uh, 12 volt battery is a weaker battery than in a traditional internal combustion engine. It uh, doesn't have to take a large amount of load like regular gasoline engines so the 12 volt battery is always going to be much weaker than your traditional gasoline uh, lead acid battery it's going to be also referenced as the traction battery it's where all the motive force for the electric motors on this thing is actually coming from uh, you got to think of these in terms of it more like being a gas generator a battery and an electric motor that are three separate components and the, the big hybrid battery is going to be located right here near the rear axle of the vehicle under the back passenger seat. Okay, and what's interesting to me, I like this, is you can generally lay like an SUV like this one, you can lay the seats down flat, they're mm -hmm. underneath the seat, so mm -hmm. it doesn't interfere with cargo not space. Not at all. It's That's not exactly true. The rear seats in the RAV4 hybrid, and I believe the RAV, the gasoline version also it's it bends up all right i've i've put a bed back there and it bends up it's a little annoying because i i thought that the they the it would go flat, flat you know and when i lay the seats down it didn't go yeah. flat seems to be really really designed well around cargo space to have that big pack in the house with you as well yes sir it bends, it curves up. So if you're standing in the back of the car and you're looking forward toward the front of the car, it curves up. And then where would a traditional 12 volt battery that you would right. use as, to start your vehicle, where would that go? So these use absorbed glass mat batteries, kind of like the Optima batteries that you may see in a boat. And they're similar technology and they're mounted back here in the very back of the vehicle. Well, I have the XLE. I have the XLE and Oh yeah, I can kind of see the bend there, but it's not, it's not flat, but that's the, no, that's a, that's a different, 
to start your vehicle, where would that go? So these use absorbed glass mat batteries, kind of like the Optima batteries that you may see in a boat. And they're similar technology and they're mounted back here in the very back of the vehicle. That is not the same. Oh, he cut to a different car. I think that's the, the uh, Prius. Yeah, that's the Prius. Now the Prius looks flat. Okay. It may be a slight bend, but that's the Prius. That is not the RAV. So he probably didn't have, he didn't get a shot. He was just talking to the guy, so he didn't get a shot. So he got another another car, maybe from uh, earlier that day or from a different day. Uh, we use absorbed glass mat because they don't have the hydrogen gas as much that comes off of a normal car battery that'd be mounted under the hood. They'll actually have a small tube to allow that off gassing to go outside of the battery. That way you never smell battery smells or even know it's in the vehicle with you for sure. Okay. okay. And this is a LE. I have the XLE. Just keeping that in mind. I have the XLE. Now, hybrid replacement, the battery pack itself, if you were to be able to see that, what would a battery pack look like, a hybrid battery pack? So our hybrid battery pack, the traction battery that's mounted under the back here, will be about this wide. It's obviously going to be narrower than the width of the vehicle. About this deep, long longitudinally, and only about that tall. They're really rather short, oh. and they're in a steel case, and they'll have a blower fan attached to one end of it for cooling and air circulation. So now for the all-important question, mm -hmm. finance and economics. Let's say sure. one of these is starting to go bad. Sure. Let's say you've got an older Prius, we'll use that because mm -hmm. a lot of people think of that one sure you can replace the individual cells or you could just replace the whole hybrid yeah you you wouldn't replace the individual cells that's crazy you don't know when the cells are going to go bad and they're all the same age so you would just replace the whole thing battery pack right when would that even make sense to replace individual cells versus the whole darn thing? Right, we've kind of seen like a small grassroots movement towards some of the second gen Prius owners wanting to replace individual cards in the battery or individual battery packs. Yeah. And our experience has been that we've had varying levels of success on that repair. So we haven't offered it here at our center because we can't guarantee the efficacy of the repair. But on the newer models, some of the packs availabilities aren't as strong as they are on some of the older battery units. So we really don't advise getting in there and trying that at this point. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And then what would, let's say somebody came in and they've got a notice that says your hybrid battery is going bad on your 2011 Prius. Sure. What would somebody expect? Like how many labor hours might that be? Because it's not just a matter of pulling the battery out. Right. You, right. You got now, most people, they, they shouldn't work on their car on a major repair like this. But myself, I would definitely change the hybrid battery myself. I wouldn't take it to the dealer. I would find a a decent company uh, that either remanufactures them or sells them sells them new and i would install it myself but most people you know they watch these channels they're not they're not really going to work on their cars so they're they're concerned about how long this battery is going to last and a nickel metal hydrate battery you know they i think they want the cheaper route toyota for whatever reason instead of putting a lithium ion battery in there because the, the lithium ion battery is better than the nickel metal hydrate so for whatever reason you know they they decided to, to downgrade the battery even on the newer models all right that car he's looking at has a nickel metal hydrate hybrid battery and my car the 2024 this is probably the 2023 or 2022 a little bit of yeah, you, elbow you, grease going on You have on to here. tear the interior down a good bit because they do tuck the batteries down low in the interior. So in other words, it's going to cost thousands of dollars. He, he's, he's basically greasing you up before he you know, gives you the shaft. And once you extract the battery, you have to safely de-energize the hybrid system and confirm it is safe for the technician to open it up. And then we'll remove the battery pack. Uh, typically, in terms of labor hours, we usually charge around five hours for the process on the third generation and second generation Priuses mm -hmm. uh, because they're less invasive than perhaps, example, be the Highlander, where you have more seats in the back that you'll have to remove. So around the five hour mark would be the labor quote on that. Usually so whatever they charge him for an hour, I guess he's trying to avoid saying the exact price. So whatever the, if he's charging $100 an hour, $5 in, in labor. Okay. Well, I'm not taking mine to the dealer. I'm going to order it online. Well, the Corolla, mm, I may just get rid of it at that point. But, and the RAV4 will be in five years. I'll be ready for a new one. I'll be at like 400000 
or 500,000. Well, we'll see. That's interesting. And then let's just say I rolled in with my Prius. What would be a ballpark? I know you can't really say for sure because every situation is different, right. but what might somebody spend? Like, what does it cost to replace a battery pack, including labor? Because people right. aren't generally going to do that themselves. Right. All right. He, he, he didn't mention the price of the actual battery pack. So I'm saying at least at least a thousand dollars for the older models. Let's see what he says. So on the older Priuses, say Gen Two, I would expect the cost to be in the neighborhood of five thousand dollars. And <laughs> whoa, did he say is that total? That's for a full battery pack replacement. And again, you have to take the battery out and tear the battery down a good bit, not as far as replacing cells, but the bus bars have to be exchanged over and the HV control units and all that have to be spend. Like, what does it cost to replace a battery pack, including labor? Because people right. aren't generally going to do that themselves. Right. So on the older Priuses, say Gen 2, I would expect the cost to be in the neighborhood of $5,000. And that's for a full battery pack replacement. And again, you have to take the battery out and tear the battery down a good bit, not as far as replacing cells, but the bus bars have to be exchanged over in the HV control units and all that have to be modded over onto the new battery. Um, so there is a little bit of invasive procedures that have to be done there. Um, an interesting thing though, once you get up to the newer models like the RAV and the Camry, they share Toyota's new Toyota next generation architecture. So you're gonna see similarities in pricing on some of these units. For example, the RAV, the hybrid battery is going to be the most expensive thing. Let's look up some prices for the hybrid battery. Okay, I put in hybrid battery, and this is one of the prices. That's whatever hybrid this fits. They want forty-seven hundred. I put in Toyota Highlander new hybrid battery twenty twenty, and this is what Google recommended. And they're saying Toyota wants fifty-seven hundred. Dorman wants 2000 It depends on the model year. But these are just generic until you put the correct year make and model. And the Camry are almost in lockstep in price on both the battery and the labor. Same with the Tundra, the hybrid, or the hybrid Tundra, the Highlander, and the new Sequoia. They're all on the same platform now, so they can offer the same pricing, and it's more congruent for our guests. That's interesting. And now, we really don't need to worry about the prices of a 23 or a 24 right now because, number one, Toyota has an incredible new hybrid Absolutely. warranty. Absolutely. I believe it's 10 years or 150,000 yes, miles for that hybrid yes, battery pack. Yes, sir. So that's peace of mind there. No, yeah, that's good. That's good. Uh, I'm going to break that very quickly. So I'm not going to be covered. I'm already at what? 35, 36,000 miles on my RAV4 thus far. So, so it's covered right now. Um, but they can't be cheap, right? To replace something right. like a Sequoia hybrid battery pack, sure, right? Sure, certainly. And the battery is an expensive component, uh, but not nearly as much as an internal combustion engine for comparison. And also, you know, having been in a volume center for eight years now, it's just not something we're seeing. We don't see battery replacements on any of our hybrid units. Anything, if it's not below a 2010, we're seeing very, very low numbers of replacement. Oh, that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. So, and you said the... Yeah, so it's, it's they're they're dependable. I've I've done videos on the hybrid. I I did a short on the on the Corolla, the battery, the lithium ion. Now that's a nickel metal hydrate right there, all right. In the Rav, the lithium ion I can stand behind. That's a decent battery. I'm sure it's not exactly what it was in 2019, but I can leave the car off for a week, turn the car on, and the engine not start because the hybrid battery is powering the accessories and the computers, all right? So that's a decent battery. Service center sees about 6,000 vehicles per month. Yes, sir. And how often might you replace a hybrid battery pack in a high volume center? We may see one a month, and that's usually a second gen Prius. It's getting to be a more rare occurrence. And again, anything 2010 and up, we're not seeing the batteries. Uh, for example, this, this particular model line of RAV and the newer Camrys, we've not even seen them opened up yet except for maybe recall repairs or something warranty unrelated to the replacement. But again, we're not seeing battery packs come out of the new cars at all. Yeah, and then just a ballpark here, just to throw out a huge number, 
Uh, what do you think like a Tundra hybrid battery pack if somebody had to replace a 23? And of course it's gonna be covered under sure, warranty. Sure. What could that cost? If labor? for example, you were in an accident and your insurance company had to pay out of pocket because it's not a warrantable concern, uh, I would expect that cost to be in the neighborhood of $7,300 to $7,500, somewhere in that ballpark. Okay. Yeah, that's about right. That's about right. Gotcha, all right. Mm -hmm. Adam, thanks for giving us the nuts and bolts, so to speak, and uh, it's an electric presentation. I love um, it. Appreciate you being here. Any last words of wisdom? Yeah, I mean, I just want to touch base on the fact that the Toyota is one of the most reliable vehicles on the planet. The hybrid system has been an absolute workhorse for us. I wouldn't expect you to need to get in here and do a whole lot of tinkering around, but if you are the do-it-yourselfer type and you are the type of person that wants to work on your own vehicle, please be aware that you need to have specialized training to operate on the hybrid system because they are inherently dangerous and there is a risk of personal well, you, you wear no personal protective equipment. You would wear the proper gloves and what, uh, what glasses to protect you from the possible risk of electric shock. You can just easily look that up online. Injury if we do get involved with that system in the wrong way.